I was home alone one hot summer evening. My parents were out on business and I was enjoying the time alone to do whatever I wanted. Now we lived in a two bedroom first floor apartment at the time. From the front entrance was a hall that opened into the kitchen. And to the left at the far end of the kitchen was my room. And to the right of the kitchen was the living room which connected to a small den. My parents' bedroom was also connected to the living room off to the right. It was around 9pm when I had just finished dinner and began my nightly routine of taking out the trash, brushing my teeth and shutting down for the night. Before retreating to my room, I opened all the windows in the kitchen and living room so that the house would cool down over the night. The windows were all barred so I wasn't too worried about any funny business happening. I'm a little bit of a security freak so all the doors in the house have locks including my bedroom and the bathroom. I shut off all the lights and went to my room to watch TV. At around midnight, I dozed off. I had a weird dream, or rather a nightmare of someone knocking on my door with the knocking getting progressively louder. It was odd because in the dream, I was laying in my bed but couldn't move. The knocking got so blaringly loud until I couldn't stand it, and then I heard a scream and I woke up. My heart was racing and I was sweating a little bit but no damage done. I looked around my room and glanced at my alarm which read 4am. Seeing nothing out of the ordinary, I brushed the dream off and I laid back down. I closed my eyes and suddenly heard knocking on my actual bedroom door. A little delirious I thought I had slipped back into my nightmare. My eyes shot wide open and I sat up and stared at my door trying to listen. There were three slow knocks that followed. My very first thought was that my parents were back early with food or something and that they wanted me to have some. My dad was notorious for knocking on my door when he got home late at night to check on me, sometimes without calling my name first. I always told him that it spooked me and he should announce himself when he knocks but he would always forget. I got up and began walking towards the door, but something felt wrong. When my parents come home, there's usually a lot of commotion. and They might be having a conversation or I can hear their keys jingling. My mom's heels, footsteps, something. This time though, it was dead silent. I stopped halfway to the door and called out. Who is it? No answer. I opened my mouth to call it again, but before I could get the first word out there, there were several rapid knocks on the door, very persistent knocks as if it was an emergency, and whoever was on the other side needed to get in now. I felt a lump in my throat. My mind was racing and the first thing I thought of was, what if it was my dad on the other side and he's in trouble? What if he's choking and he can't speak? What if he needs my help? I was frozen in place and I couldn't move. I said, who is it, once more, again nothing. Please say something, please tell me who it is, it's not funny, I said. A few moments of silence went by. Suddenly, it was as if someone threw their whole weight in the door. Rapid, loud bangs began attacking the door, kicks, punches. It was as if there were three people on the other side trying to break the door down. It was so loud that I started crying. I found myself jumping backwards and crawling to the corner of my room. The violent banging went on for a few more moments, and then silence. I sat in the corner frozen. My hands were covering my mouth and tears were rolling down my cheeks. I thought this was the end. I was shocked that the door still stood because when I heard the first bang, I thought the frame would come crashing down. And whatever was on the other side would instantly enter and end my life. I sat there for a brief period of time that felt like an eternity. Suddenly, I heard clinking, the sound of metal brushing past each other. I knew whatever was on the other side was going through the silverware drawer. If my life didn't end already, this was my last chance because I wouldn't get another. I sprang up and climbed out of my dresser, sitting against my window. 
I threw open the curtain and shoved the window down and climbed out as quietly as I could. I thought of the sidewalk and ran to the police station down the road. I was hysterical and told them what had occurred. That night, my parents were called and they did an investigation of my house. The only things out of place were a cigarette butt left at the base of my bedroom door and a butter knife on the kitchen table. In the following months, we moved out of that apartment and thankfully, I can say that was the most excitement that I had ever been through. I soon went to college, graduated, moved to a new state with my family nearby, and life is continuing on as normal. I never know if it was a prank that night or if someone was actually out to get me, but luckily, I'll never find out. About three years ago, I lived in a little studio apartment by myself. I had lived there for one year in total and the entire time that I had lived there, someone would knock at my door about once a week, sometimes a few times a week, and occasionally multiple times in the same night. This studio apartment was in an apartment building with only six units. There was an old lady who lived across the street from me, a young girl about the same age living above me, and an older couple living next to her. The rest of the apartments were empty during my time there. Shortly after I had moved in, I started to get knocks on the door at around 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. The first time that it happened, I was awake and watching a movie. I had gotten home really late from work and I couldn't fall asleep. I heard three firm knocks on the door. It was late and I'm a female and I live alone so I definitely wasn't going to answer it. It was so loud that I was even too scared to go and look through the people on the door. My dog started to bark so I shushed him and made him get into bed with me. Then we get under the covers and I'm absolutely petrified. He's still barking but the knocking didn't continue. I texted my boyfriend about it but he's asleep so he doesn't reply until the next morning. He tells me that it was probably someone who had the wrong apartment, and that made sense. Weeks go by before anything else happens, but it definitely did happen again. This time, I'm asleep. It's late and I hear firm knocks on my door. My dog is barking so I grab his collar and push him in his kennel, which is on the way to my front door. I go and look through the people, but there is no one standing in front of the door. Now I'm really freaked out now. I go look out the only window that I have in the whole apartment, which faces the parking lot. There are no extra cars, bikes, motorcycles, etc. I called my boyfriend because at this point, I was too scared to even go to sleep. He assures me that it must be someone who was looking for another apartment. I mean, what else could it be? Months and months pass and this happens all the time now. I had spoken with the landlord on many occasions and they assure me that it isn't them and that it's not one of their maintenance men. I had begged to get out of my lease but I wasn't able to. My boyfriend never spent the night, he's Catholic, but about 10 months into my lease, his family has a big birthday party for his younger sister and he agrees to spend the night at my apartment so that some family coming in from out of town can sleep in his bed. We stayed up late watching movies and again, at around 2 or 3 in the morning, there is a heavy loud knock on my door. I look at my boyfriend in a kind of, see I told you sort of way. He gets up and opens the front door quickly, maybe thinking that he can catch the person that's doing this, but no one's there. It's cold out that night and it's quiet, and we don't hear anyone walking around, nobody talking or getting into the car, nothing. When we get back into bed and fall asleep. Around 5am, someone knocks on the door again. This time it's quieter. My boyfriend decides to call the police. We call, they come out and they search around the vicinity of the place and said that they didn't see anyone hanging around. The next morning as we're leaving, my neighbor whose front door is directly across from mine, the old lady, is also leaving. She doesn't speak English, so I've never really talked to her. 
but my boyfriend asks her in Spanish if she has had anyone knock on her door. She tells him no and asks why he's asking. He tells her that for the last year almost, I've had someone knock on my door at least a weekly. She tells us that she's sorry she didn't see or hear anything, but that she'd let us know if she does. A couple of weeks later, I let my landlord know that I would not be renewing my lease. My boyfriend asked if we could move into a new place together, and I happily agreed. A month later, the night before I moved, I was up late packing so that I could be early the next morning and be ready. My dog was already at the new place with my boyfriend, so I was all alone. There were three knocks and then it stopped. I flicked my porch light on through the people. Again, no one was there. I felt a little less scared knowing that I wouldn't be sleeping here again. But I never found out who was knocking at my door or why. To this day, it completely baffles me. I've thought of every possible reason and I have no idea why. For an entire year, someone would continuously knock on my door almost weekly. After I moved away, it stopped and it never happened again. For background and relevance to the story, I live on a private drive, it's not gated, with three houses on it. My house is number three, the last house. At the time, my first neighbor had a stay-at-home mom, and she worked from home so they were always at home. And my second is an elderly lady who was always at home as well. So you would have to walk up the drive and pass the other two of my neighbor's houses to get to mine, the last one. Also, as our house is at an angle, when you stand at the front door face on to the left down the side of my house, you can see our back gate which enters into a back garden and our back door. So, growing up I had a pretty disruptive childhood. Parents with a volatile relationship and alcoholic mother etc, a messy divorce. This had quite an adverse effect on myself and I and I had depression since a young child. Maybe 8 years old from what I can remember. When I was around 12, I left a secondary school, and I proceeded to stay at home all day every day for the next four years, having little to no interaction with anyone, unless it was over the internet. My mother had no choice but to go to work and to leave me at home. Because we live on a private drive, the only people who knock on the door are the postman or a neighbor or a guest who we are expecting. One weekday, I was home alone as usual when I was maybe 13-ish. It was the early afternoon. I had someone hammering on our front door so dramatically, it was like they were going to knock it down. As my bedroom window overlooks the front of the house, I peeked out of the window and saw that there was a woman standing there waiting for someone to answer. She was in her mid-30s maybe, with medium brown hair and carrying a bit of weight. Pretty ordinary looking if I'm honest but I wasn't going to answer the door to this woman. I was a very anxious child, so I always had my wits about me, and my mom told me to never answer the door to anyone when she wasn't home. The knocking stopped, and I thanked God for that and that she had gone away. But the next thing I know, this woman had walked down the side of my house, opened our back gate, and started frantically banging on our back door, which is primarily glass, so it sounded awful to me at the time. I crept into my mom's bedroom, which overlooks my back garden, and this woman was just standing at the back door, frantically hitting it. Safe to say, stranger danger. I did not answer the door to her, and the woman eventually went away. Still to this day, this sits really uncomfortably with me. I never mentioned it to my mom, and I never really thought that much about it at the time other than, well, that was odd. And I think about this at least every few months as an adult. What the heck did this woman want? And why was she in such a panic or why was she angry? Why did she bypass both my neighbor's homes and just start banging on our front door? And then run around to the back of the house and did it on the back door? I just really didn't understand it. It was creepy for me. This happened about 5 years ago. I was around 16 or 17 and I always enjoyed walking. I would spend at least an hour a day walking the roads around where I lived. 
One day I was out, doing my normal route, walking down my street that my house was on, taking a right out to the main street, and following it until I got to the end. There, I would cross the crosswalk and retrace my steps to go back home. On this particular day, I was about 20 feet from where I would leave the main road on my journey back home. I had my headphones in, blasting music as always. Which can be a bad habit as I'm a young female that has been put in some sketchy situations while going for my walks. Men chasing me, following me, etc. But since it was daylight and the roads were pretty busy, I figured that I was safe. But man, was I ever off with that assumption. As I was about to pass the entrance of a side street before leaving this main road, a black Ford F-150 pulled up. He stopped and gestures for me to walk in front of him, so I do so. I was about to go on my merry way when I barely heard someone trying to talk to me. I turned on my music, taking out my headphones as I looked to see the man in the black Ford, still stopped at the entrance of the side road. I looked at him puzzled, trying to figure out if he was talking to me. I pointed at myself and he grinned, nodding. What's a beautiful girl like you doing out here? He asked. I laughed awkwardly. Um, walking? I replied, seeing as the answer should have been obvious. It's a beautiful day for that, he commented, just seeming to make small talk. Yeah, I stated before going to turn around and continue my route home. Wait, the man called. I stopped and turned around, just trying to be polite. Even though the encounter was odd, I didn't see too many red flags. The man then went off saying things such as, You're so beautiful. You know, you have a really nice body. This hot weather is nice for a hot girl. I grew incredibly uncomfortable at this point, seeing as this man had to be in his middle 40s. He had a bit of a receding hairline with black hair, a nose with a protruding bridge, blue eyes that were surrounded by slight wrinkles, and he was dressed in a dress shirt. So I instantly brought up my age saying, I'm a minor. There have been multiple times that I had been mistaken for being older than I was, and I was hoping saying this would get this fully grown adult man to back off. But he didn't. No, that's okay. Come on, sweetheart, get in the truck. That's when I started panicking. Red flags shooting up everywhere. Stranger danger. I laughed nervously, looking at the cars around me to see if anyone else was noticing what was happening. Nobody did. Um, no, that's fine. My house isn't far. No, really. Get in the truck. I'll bring you home. No. Come on, just get in here with me. He called as I turned and started walking away. I was hoping that he would just drive off somewhere, but he didn't. Instead, he drove extremely slow, following me, complimenting me, and trying to pressure me to get into his truck. I thought fast of multiple options for different scenarios, but I chose on a simple one. I pulled up my phone while still walking, and I lifted it up to my ear, pretending to loudly answer a phone call. Hey dad, yeah, no. I'm just on the street that I was on. I'll be home in about 10 minutes. I stopped pretending to listen to a reply. Oh, you're outside waiting for me. Awesome. Yeah, we can do that when we get back. Love you. After he heard me say that, he took off, tires screeching. I ran back home and made it back within about six minutes. I actually be calling my dad on the way, who had made a call to the police, who showed up shortly after and took my statement and description. It turns out, there is a man on the loose in my area who was exposing himself to minors 
and trying to pick them up for bad things. But they never actually found out who exactly it was. 